So, Bob, just introduce yourself to folks. Uh, Bob Inglis uh, used to represent the 4th District of South Carolina and now doing energy work where I'm uh, hoping to help persuade uh, the country that there's a conservative solution on energy and climate. So you were a member of Congress for uh, six years and then another six years, right? Right. Uh, Twelve of the last 18 years I was in Congress, yeah. So now you've got a real job? Is that what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Uh, it's uh, really sort of uh, in a similar vein, just a different constituency and the uh, same issue that I was very passionate about in Congress, and that is an incredible opportunity with energy and climate to basically uh, offer a solution that actually would deliver uh, to us a, a free enterprise approach to uh, settling the, the, the challenges of uh, energy and climate. So um, that's what I'm doing now is, uh, is uh, spreading the word really that um, in the concept of accountability and uh, attaching all costs to all fuels and eliminating all subsidies for all fuels, that actually the free enterprise system could deliver a powerful solution to both our energy needs and to the climate challenge. Well, I want to ask you a few more questions about that, but first, um, could you let folks know um, uh, you're a Christian and you're an elder, and just tell folks a little bit about your, your Christian background and commitment? Well, really, I think this is a, a lot about that. I mean, this is what uh, my motivation springs from when it comes to energy and climate. It's about uh, stewardship, and it's about uh, loving uh, our neighbors. Um, you know, the um, I've been inspired by various people along the way when it comes to uh, this work on energy and climate. Uh, one of the uh, most powerful inspirations was a friend in Australia who, who really expresses this in the concept of love. In other words, it, would, would you love people that you don't even know? Um, would you love the next generation? Would you be willing, because of that love, to change something about the way that you do business? Would you be willing to innovate? Would you be willing to change your life? Would you be willing to express that love for somebody you don't know and for a generation you don't yet know? And I think that uh, if we're with Jesus, the answer is, yeah, I'd be willing to change. Um, and particularly if you can change and win at the same time. In other words, this is where I uh, find it consistent to be about this free enterprise solution as well as being a believer, is if you can serve other people and also serve your country by uh, creating wealth and making it so that we can sell these fabulous new products around the world. It's a win-win, both on the level of faith and on the level of patriotism. So um, just a little bit more on your Christian background. How, how, when did you become a Christian? Well, I was, uh, grew up in the church, the Episcopal Church actually, and it uh, wasn't until college so that I came to understand that uh, what Jesus is calling us to is a personal relationship um, with him. It's a love affair that he initiates, that the Spirit tells us about, gives us the ability to respond to, and uh, then we just sing the love song back that um, he's singing. And I realize in putting it that way, some people don't see it that way. I remember when I first accepted Christ, uh, there was a uh, youth leader who said, uh, we've all become Christians for fear of hell. And uh, I remember sitting there thinking, uh, I know you've been walking with the Lord longer than me, because I had only been a Christian for a matter of months, uh, but I didn't know why I became a Christian. Uh, apparently that guy thought he was buying a fire insurance policy. Um, I heard a love song, and uh, it was an incredible love song, and I wanted to respond to it by the God's grace and, uh, and try to sing it back to that lover. Um, so. Uh, maybe it's a different take on a slightly different angle on that for some, and some people. Some people see it more as a fire insurance policy, but I see it as a love song and a very singable love song that other people would like to hear if we would just sing it to them or allow the Spirit to sing it to them through us. And um, again, um, how is this love song, um, again, re can you relate that a bit to these issues of climate change and energy? Yeah, I think what it means is if, if our brother, our sister, needed us to change uh, so that we could serve them, would we, we, would we be willing or would we insist on continuing on in our ways? Uh, our ways so far have been 
uh, basically using, for example, fossil fuels to power our lives. Um, and it works all right for me on the receiving end, you know, it's my house. But if it's harming the systems of creation, and if it's uh, also imperiling our national security, I would add, um, then would I be willing to change? And it seems to me that love, the, the, the dictates of love are, yeah, change because you want to love, you want to express that love. Because, you know, Jesus' summary of the law can even be summarized even further. It's basically to love God, love people. And uh, so if we can do that, um, it is all about love. And, uh, and so I wish the political process showed that more right now. It seems a little bit odd to speak of love in the political process because right now it seems to be an awful lot about hate, but uh, not about love. But, um, uh, but I hope that believers will reflect more of the love song that we heard when we first came to Christ and, uh, and then sing it so that other people can overhear that singing and, uh, and be persuaded, really, there's a lover who really does love this. Uh, Jack Miller used to say, you know, uh, the gospel is two things, uh, cheer up, you're worse than you think, um, and, uh, but you are more loved than you ever dared to imagine. And that, if we really believe that, um, it'd be a very easy thing to spread the gospel. The problem is, we don't really believe it. Um, we don't really believe it's that good of a story. If we thought it was a really great story, we'd be singing it out loud. Um, so what we got to do is get convinced of the story again and realize that, no, no, it really is that good of a story. Cheer up, you're worse than you think. In other words, you really do need grace. But on the other hand, you're more loved than you ever dared imagine. Uh, of course, what Jack Merrill was basing that on was the verse in 2 Corinthians 5 about God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That second part, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God, is that part about how you're more loved than you ever dared imagine. In other words, you really are transformed. The first part is that there's a substitute, there's a sacrifice for our sin. It's been paid for. And uh, that's really good news. Um, so if we really believe it's that good of a news, we'd be singing it. And, um, I mean, as Christians, we know of this good news, and we're empowered by uh, this love, as you say. But in the realm of policy, uh, uh, we also need to look to enlightened self-interest, as you were talking about yeah. tonight. Uh, yeah. And and how do you feel that... Uh, how can we harness uh, enlightened self-interest of, of everybody in society uh, to help tackle these issues? And then, of course, we'll hope that Christians will take things even further than enlightened self-interest. Well, I think, first of all, you, 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 it, there's, no, um, there's no reason not to start with the evidence. You know, I mean, what, what you want to do, you want to you be, be sure of our salvation and sure of uh, the love affair that Christ has for us. If we're sure of that, then we can look into anything. I mean, we can look into any facts and decide whether they're, you know, and we don't have to be afraid of the facts. And the facts here on when it comes to energy and climate is we got a problem. Um, and uh, that, that uh, with the confidence of knowing that all of our real needs are already met, um, and that we are now stewards in this wonderful creation, but we've got somebody that's a sustainer that's going to meet all of our needs, then we go about as stewards uh, to be faithful. Um, and part of being faithful, seems to me, is coming up with a way to make it so that our society really can respond to this challenge of energy and climate. Um, and, and, and that's, I think... Um, Harnessing the power as, as a conservative, as a political conservative now I'm speaking, uh, because there are such things as Christians who aren't political conservatives, but I'm a political conservative Christian. Um, you want to harness, I want to harness the power of free enterprise to, um, to address that problem, uh, to address that challenge. And um, I think there's a way to do that by, um, by attaching all costs to all fuels and by eliminating all subsidies for all fuels getting the government out of the business of picking winners and losers, and making it so that individual consumers, in enlightened self-interest, seek out uh, a real competition between the fuels and 
drive the innovation by saying, you know, I see now, because we've made it accountable, uh, coal-fired electricity isn't as cheap as it looks. It's really pretty expensive um, when you consider the health impacts. Um, and uh, petroleum, you know, that's not as cheap. That gasoline, while we think it's expensive, is really way more expensive than what we're paying at the pump. It's just we pay in all these hidden ways. If we insist on accountability, which is a key political conservative value, but it's also a key uh, social issue or, or Christian uh, value, then what we do is we, we, we break that the hold that these uh, fossil fuels have on the marketplace we start delivering the alternatives, and those alternatives have some really great advantages like improving our national security, creating jobs, and if you care, and I believe Christians should care, we clean up the air all, all three at once. Well, Congressman Bob Inglis, uh, we're so grateful for your leadership that you demonstrated in Congress, and now that you're uh, demonstrating out of Congress, trying to help uh, Republicans and the country understand a, uh, you know, various ways to tackle this issue, that there are conservative ways to deal with these climate and energy issues in ways that uh, help with, uh, can be in our own self-interest, but also can reflect the love of Christ. So we're so thankful for your leadership. Well, thanks, Jim. Appreciate what you're doing.